hopefully my camera will stay um, <laughs> running. I'm actually getting a low tire pressure warning and I checked the tires and they're fine. Um, 27 is right where they all run all the time except for I'm getting the alert on the, the um, left rear tire which I checked it, it's fine. So I don't know if it's because I may have been parked up on something that was uh, throwing it off or what. I mean, it like you know, it's just it's fine. So it's kind of strange, but anyway. So I'm not heading to work today. Uh, my boss is generous enough to give me the next two off. Um, I came home to shower and change. Don't really have any new information right now, sadly. I mean, it's been almost a whole fucking day. Pardon my French. And because he's not considered to be critical condition, it's what they call non-stat. So basically, basically his tests are going in the pile with everyone else's. Which, okay, I can understand. If I had a life-threatening something I would expect to be at the front. I understand that, but it's still frustrating. The Sparrow is a very big hospital. They receive a lot of patients. And so I understand that the workload is high, um, but it's just so frustrating for us to be playing the waiting game for almost a day just to get um, uh, a neurologist to do CT scans and so on to figure out exactly what happened. I mean, they've been doing his blood oxygen level, which has been good, but he still has slurred speech. Um, you know, there was one time when he didn't know who I was. I mean, these are things that that I want to know, and I don't know if that you know. Ah, uh, this is so so stressful right now. This is something that I never wanted to be in. I think I mentioned that before. No position that any child wants to be in. And uh, I'm going to be heading back out there, but first I need to get something to eat. The cafeteria is closed for everything but, like, cereal. And, I'm sorry, I'm just not in the mood for something that I can get at home. So, um, screwed up my new New Year's resolution yesterday. I had a um, egg and cheese biscuit, or McMuffin, and uh, a Sprite. which I didn't want to, but I was so hungry, and, well, anyways, and now I'm going to screw up my diet even more, the only place that's open right now, and I don't feel like going to McDonald's again, the only place that's open right now is Taco Bell, but I didn't order all that much, just one meal, um, anyways, yeah, it's a pathetic excuse, I know, but I don't feel like cooking, uh, the cafeteria food is just as bad, so uh, I'm just going to have to suck it up today. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been a miserable, miserable 24 hours. Uh, so you know, my you know my wife bless her heart, she's she's in this field, she's in you know vascular ultrasound, she's. She's a technician, so she's looking at this from the technical point of view rather than the family or emotional point of view, and I can't fault her for that because that's, that's what she does. So talking to her about it, she wants the analytical on it rather than the emotional, and you know, I I really can't fault her for that because that's what she does. But I don't know. I guess I guess I got you guys to kind of lay my head on your shoulder, so to speak. I'm very stressed out right now, and I just, you know, it's just been an overwhelming experience for me to have to see my dad in such a frail state, and still in that frail state, no improvements whatsoever, nothing, it's like, when I first walked in yesterday morning, he looks the same as, as he does now, uh, or he looked, you know, whatever, you know what I mean, there's no difference there, and those images I cannot go out of my head, I, I can't get them out of my head, and 
trying to talk to my wife about it. She, like I said, and there's nothing wrong with this. She's she's more taking on the, the, the statistical, analytical, medical kind of point of view about, well, you know, this could be this and this could be that. You know, she knows all this shit. She does. She's, she's, that's what she was trained for. So, you know, when a little bit of information trickles out, I'll send her a text message about what I know, then she's asking all these questions about um, texts and this and what they can find here and this and that and the other. That's, like, ah, that's not what I need right now. I just need somebody to sit down and talk to, I guess. You know, my sister's way up in Carson City. Um, and I don't know. I guess it's just stressful and I'm not really in the mood. And everybody deals with pain and stress and sorrow in a different way. I'm not really in the mood for talking to a professional. I'm really not. I don't want to sit down and talk to a counselor. I, I don't. I just want to sit down and talk to a friend, I guess. Just, just talk to a friend. Unload. I guess that's why I'm talking to you guys right now. Um, it's... I got so many things going on right now all at once. It's incredible. It's like uh, my life's been turned upside down. Ugh. You know, when you try to sleep in situations like that, and you can't because, you know, of worry and hearing all the different noises in the hospital, medical monitors, sharing a room with somebody else so you're trying to be respectful and <sighs> the possibilities the <sighs> I don't know it's like <sighs> I don't know I guess I just haven't had a real chance to process this. Oh, oh man, sorry. Oh, this is, uh, like I said, overwhelming. Oh, damn. It's, uh, Ah, anyway, I'm gonna take a break here and, um, ah, screw it, I'll just pull up. How ironic, just sitting here eating a couple of chicken burritos and <laughs> right in front of a Planet Fitness. Hilarious. <clears throat> the gym that I'm going to be joining. Not off to a very good start, am I? <clears throat> On a side note, checking my tire pressure. It's, um, you know, it's going back up, so I don't know if uh, it's just because it's cold. Cold in the sensors. I'm not really sure, but <clears throat> my uh, left rear has always been two pounds less than the, um, the other tires. I don't know why. It's just the way that it is. I figured before I get on the road again, <clears throat> I would uh, talk a little bit more. Um, I uh, I really hope that everything turns out fine. I mean, why would I think otherwise? I hope this is one of those cases where, you know, it's just a stroke I, I don't mean to make it sound like a stroke is nothing but one of those strokes that um, that you can recover from and that he'll continue on his life 
he really needs to quit smoking, but he's been told that so many times. I hope this is the wake-up call he needs. But, you know, every time, well, it's like, Sparrow Hospital is so nice. I mean, it's, it's right up there among the best. It's no university hospital or anything, but it's, it has grown leaps and bounds. I was born there 33 years ago, and my mom said that they had four floors, and, you know, it was no bigger than a street corner, and now... Now it's expanded so much. They own so much property. They're actually, they've bought uh, more property for parking. Uh, and, you know, it's it's just amazing how big that hospital is. But I don't, it's such an eerie feeling being in a hospital. Maybe it's because I'm <clears throat> not in hospitals all that much maybe that's the problem you know it's just like anything else when you're exposed to something for long enough you kind of grow numb to it I mean I, I can't imagine trauma and ER medical staff having to deal with death on a daily or even hourly basis you know it's thinking it's thinking about me being on that bed and them fighting to save my life or something like that it's a scary place to be whether I'm aware of it or not just the thought of it try not to think about it though that's the uh that's the thing, it's like, what's the point in even thinking about it? Because it's not going to change what happens. You know, I'm either going to die of old age of a heart attack or stroke or cancer or get into a car accident or fall off a bridge or, you know, whatever. Don't know what it's going to be, but it's going to be something. This is something that... I would think that most people who were having a midlife crisis would be thinking about, but here I am, my dad's in his late 50s, and I'm thinking about this stuff, and I'm in my early 30s. I know that there's some of you out there who've lost your parents at a young age, and, you know, I'm sorry. I guess I fit into that normal, parents grow old, then they die. I mean, my grandpa is still alive. I mean, he's, you know, he's at that point now where he's coming up to the end, but I would expect that. He's almost 90 years old. My dad's in his late 50s, and he's the one who's in the hospital. He's the one who's under intensive care. He's the one who's struggling to breathe and can't talk. And it just I was looking through some reels, some um, 8 millimeter reels that uh, my grandpa had has had whatever I found uh, I found a wedding one of my great uncles I don't even know who it is never met the guy but it was at a wedding and my uh, my grandfather's actually my grandmother's family was fairly well off I mean well off and you know, my, my great grandpa was always in the newspapers and so on. He was he was just um you know, he just was wealthy. That's all there is to it. He was wealthy. And um seeing my entire family my grandpa maybe in his early forties my dad, five, six, seven years old, and my aunt, who's older than him, and my grandma, seeing them young and healthy and happy, and here, now we're at the point where it's like, my grandpa's, you know, nearing the end of his life, my dad is in the hospital, 
fighting for his, and it's just like, what, what the fuck is going on here? What is going on here? This isn't the way that it was supposed to be, and I understand. Believe me, I'm not trying to get sympathy from anybody who's listening to this right now. I'm not trying to get sympathy and say, woe is me, I got dealt a bad hand. I'm lucky that my dad has made it this far. I'm lucky that I still have a grandpa who's alive. There's a lot of things that I'm thankful for, but it's just, you know, in my world, in my little world here, as insignificant as it is, in the grand scheme of things, I just have to wonder why the hell this is all happening now. I mean, I don't know. It's hard to talk about. It's very stressful. I guess I guess it's like I never imagined losing my dad and that's what really hurts and it just Hard to, hard to even think about. Just wish. Just wish it could all be over with. You know what? Just, just. Oh, anyways, I guess I just need to vent a little bit. We got you guys out there who are actually paying attention. Kind of your shoulder, I guess. Seems kind of funny, though. Sitting in my car all by myself, talking to a camera. But I know this video is going on YouTube, and I know some of you out there are going to listen to it. And <clears throat> I know that... Uh, some of you will understand, some of you won't. <clears throat> some of you would rather stay out of it. That's fine. <sighs> ah, anyways. Guess I just need somebody to talk to, that's all. A friend. Just talk to a friend. All right, well, anyways, I'm going to uh, head back. I think I've babbled long enough. I'm just going to have to oh, be the adult <clears throat> that I am and um, deal with it. Just try to be strong for my dad and strong for the rest of my family and just deal with it. Not try to think about what could happen or <clears throat> what could even happen to me. Anyways, so thanks everybody for listening. I got a couple of um, private messages from my other video that I posted. Um, some encouraging words, things like that. And I really do appreciate that. It's, it's something that uh, means a lot. So those of you out there who are there and watching, I really do appreciate it. I do. So, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and cut this off and head on out, and hopefully I'll know something here pretty soon. So, take care, everybody.